Hold on, Caro, hold on. Tony! Ah! So many Shambas to shape. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice. While learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on this journey and share in the farmers' experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. This week we are near the Tanzanian border in Taita Taveta by the beautiful Lake Chala. Carol, what are we doing here? You know, Tony, we're always teaching farmers how to fish instead of giving them the fish. You are hungry, right? Yes. So today you're fishing. Come what? On, get to work, Tony. Caro. Get to work. All right. Quickly. Carlo, Tony. Carlo, Tony. Welcome, Welcome to, to Shamba Shepa. My name is Joram. I'm 25 years old now. I'm doing farming. In the future, I want to do something called agribusiness. How is everything here? Everything is alright? Uh -huh. yeah. Joram was not all that good in farming. He was not good at all. <laughs> he was not all that good. He was very slippery. Life became very harsh. Uh -huh. Then he came back and I uh -huh. told him, take over because ah. I want to hand over everything to you. That is so awesome. That's why I'm here with him. Yes. And I want him to do better than me. Mm -hmm. As I came from Nairobi, I started farming. I got some money. Because my father had kind, I could not tell him to give me. I only purchased them from him. My plans is just to make them advance from the breed they have to the new product. My dream is just to have different products from agriculture activities. I make my own money through agriculture, making my own bulls, which also can be good for crossbreeding to the people around, and also my place be a good place for academic agriculture, educational center for agriculture. Now, you're in luck because we are here and you've come with our experts yes. to give you the guidance on what you need and to make sure that you are shaped up. Okay, we'll see you in a we'll bit, all right? Yes. Okay, okay. All right. Carol, let's go. Let's go. Don't be slippery. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> Beef cattle do very well in this region. Joram has taken over a herd of cattle from his father that he wants to improve on. The challenge is it comes when in marketing. That's the big challenge we have. Also in feeding. Joram? Yes. Hey, I thought I would find you here. So how many cows do you have here? I have 25. 25? Yeah. And all of them are yours? Not all of them. Some are from my dad, uh -huh. some are mine. Okay, how many are yours? The ones now you've inherited from your dad? I have like seven. Seven? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think you need some help. Yeah. So, let me see what I can do. I'll see you in a bit, okay? Yeah. All right. To help Joram build on and improve his beef herd, we have brought in David Nzomo from CKL Africa to show him how best to do it. David, yes. thank you so much for giving us your time. Meet Joram, our farmer. Joram, this is David, our expert. Yeah. So tell us about these cows. I've done something called it crossbreeding between the local ones and the... The new breed. The new breed. Yes. So that I can advance. Tell us your, your daily routine. I am sure David mm -hmm. would love to hear that. I yes, make sure where they are, mm. it is clean. Okay. And the environment there is well organized mm -hmm. and they feed and 
make sure after one month mm -hmm. I do something you call deworming. Deworming. Yeah. So, okay. what have you observed? Because you've done some inspection. The first thing is that uh, Jerome, you should improve about the hygiene mm. yeah. because. The calves are very sensitive to diseases, so once the hygiene is not very good, they might be, get some diseases. Yeah. So the foundation of any farm is about the, the calves. So if you take care of the calves very well from the beginning, you'll get good results. And I'm very encouraged that you are, you are into agribusiness. So for the male calves, I'm sure you, are, you have the program of fattening them, so that maybe after two years, you dispose them or you sell them. So that is very encouraging. From the look of the calves, you can see that the color coat of the skin of the calves, it is not good. Like this one, some patches are brown, others are black. Yeah. So that can be an indication that the warming was it done very well. Again, it can also be an indication that there are some minerals which the calves are, are lacking. And once you give those minerals, you'll find that your calves are growing very well and they are very healthy. And you'll be able to attain the weight of the calves, for example, the male ones, like after a period of uh, two years. So that is very important. And you ensure that they have water throughout. And again, for the deworming, for the first six months, you make sure that you deworm each month. Then after that, now you'll be deworming after every three months. So for the nutrition, it's good to give them mineral salts. For the calves which are uh, about one year, we normally have uh, a specific mineral supplement for, for those ones. So we have a, a product here called Maclic beef. You normally give this salt as a free choice. So you put a trough somewhere, you let the calves uh, lick the salt. Once they are satisfied, they leave it there. So this one will enable them to have the basic uh, elements and also the, the, the trace elements. Any other product? Yes, apart from this, uh, uh, we have another product here called the Diamond V. So what Diamond V does, once you give, you give the calves, it develops the, the, the rumen. So it is very good for the rumen uh, bacteria, which will assist in digesting the food the calves uh, take. So that one will assist in making the calves uh, grow very fast and they will be very uh, healthy. Are we clear? Okay, let's simplify. Maglik beef is a powder salt lick that has all the minerals needed to help a beef cow grow well. For maglik beef, pour enough product in a basin close to the calves for them to lick as they like. Diamond V helps the calves develop their rumen, making them digest better. For Diamond V, mix and feed concentrate or maize jam. One teaspoon per calf for calves under six months or three teaspoons per calf for calves over six months of age in feed concentrate or maize jam. You can give extra legends from one to six months of the calf's life, then switch to maklik beef. Maklik beef is a powder salt lick that has all the minerals needed to help a beef cow grow well. Joram, if you're able to do that, then I am sure your agribusiness is going to grow and money is going to be rolling. Yes, thank sure. you very much, David. Welcome, Carol. And thank you, Joram, for having us. Thank you. Yes. Joram's cow shed needed a bit of fixing up, so Kamau did what he knows best. He starts shaping things up. Nowadays, the climate has changed a lot. In the past, we could have all kinds of feed we wanted, but now it is not easy to get some feeds. With the changing weather patterns, as a farmer, you need to protect yourself from drought by ensuring you've got enough fodder to last for a very long time. Hey, Joram, yes. what's going on? I'm just carrying the feed of the K20 is this, is this how you carry the feed? Yeah. You need help. Oh. Living in a sometimes dry region means planning for feed. Joram had tried making silage before, but was not very successful. We have brought in Dr. Jesse Kagai from Ilri to see exactly what went wrong and how he can help. 
Joram has a mix of Napier and other grasses on his farm. He tried making silage once, but uh, it ended up rotting. Now, Jesse, yes. why is silage important? So, silage, first of all, is conserved fodder. When you conserve that fodder, you'll be able to have enough when there is drought, one, and two, when, for example, you harvest napier, you leave the napier to regrow or to regenerate again when there is still rain. So that is one of the most important uh, uh, things. C can farmers only make silage out of napier? No, um, you can make silage out of different types of fodder. One is napier, which is uh, most common. Then there is maize and then sorghum also. But in terms of quality, maize silage is the best. Sounds complicated, doesn't it? Well then, let's simplify it. To make silage, we will need well wilted and chopped fodder, a silage bag, molasses, water, and a strong rope. First, pour three buckets full of chopped fodder at the bottom of the bag and compress. Then, sprinkle about four hands full of molasses and water mixture. Do not soak the chopped napier. Pour one bucket of chopped fodder, sprinkle four hands full again of the molasses and water mixture and compress. Once done, push all the air out of the top of the bag. Twist the top to stop any air from going in. Tie tight with a strong rope and place a heavy rock on top of it. With that done, Joram now knows how to make silage and can prepare for the dry season with enough feed for his cows, ensuring he has milk when the prices go up. Coming up, this week's weather forecast. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Weather and Farming News for Kenya. In the coming week, we expect no or very little rains across Kenya. North, Upper and Lower Eastern, including Mandera, Wajia, Isiolo, Meru, Taraka, Kitui and Makwini, will see very low rains of less than 5 mm across the week. Lower Garissa, however, will be an exception, getting up to 180 mm of total rains. The coastal counties will get moderate to high levels of total rains of up to 180 mm across the week. This includes Lamu, Kilifi, Mombasa and Kwale. Taitataveta and Tana River will have lower total rains of up to 15 mm with areas near the coastline getting up to 75 mm of rains in the week. Central Kenya counties such as Moranga, Nyeri, Nyandarwa and Laikipia as well as Nairobi and Kiambu will see very low total rains of less than 5 mm except Embu which might receive up to 15 mm of rains across the week. The North, Central and South Rift Valley will as well get very low rains of up to 5 mm across the week. This cuts across to Kana, West Pokot, Marakwet, Samburu, Baringo, Nakuru to Narok. Transoya and Nandi however expect 5 to 50 mm of total rains. The western Nyanza regions will also get low to moderate levels of rains ranging between 5 to 50 mm across the week. This spans across counties of Busia, Kakamega, Vihiga, Tusiaya, Kisumu, Nyamira, Kisi and Miguri. Farmer, if you're growing coffee, this is the best time to prevent fungal diseases like coffee berry disease which causes sunken patches with spots on berries and eventually dries up the crop and coffee leaf rust which causes brown spots on leaves and stems. Use copper-based fungicides and also prune or remove unwanted vertical branches that do not bear fruits. During the rainy season, there are many external parasite infections such as tick-related diseases. When it's warm and moist, ticks lay eggs and multiply. Control them by spraying acaricides every seven days. For more tips and details, focus for your area. Get in touch with iShamba. Call 0711-082-606. I am Brenda. See you next week on the Shamba Shape Up Farming News. For Kenya. Coming up after the break. We go completely bananas and learn a lot about them. And we take Joram to visit a farmer who has experience with contract farming. Welcome back to Shamba Shepherd. 
In this section, we take Joram to visit a farmer who has overcome many challenges to turn his farm into a profitable business. But first, let's talk bananas. In this Saita Taveta region, everywhere you look, all you see is bananas. They're staple here. Question is, are they grown in the right way? I'm planning to have banana seedlings so that I can have very big plantation of banana where I see the government is planning to have its own industrial area for banana processing. Ah, you're there. Huh? I've been walking inside and out of this plantation looking for you. Yeah. You're good. Yeah, I'm good. Ah, I can see you're very busy. What's happening here? I'm just repairing this drip pipes, yeah. Okay, for irrigation? Yeah, for irrigation. Any other challenges you're facing? Ah, we have many challenges. Many? Many. Yeah, many. Key a lot of is many. Yeah, a lot right. of them. Not to worry. Let's not even waste any more time. Okay. Let me get help. Okay? okay. See yeah. you in a bit. Okay. All right. Bananas are a good crop for diversification. They do very well where there is irrigation water available in dry areas. And Taita may be dry, but there is irrigation water available. How are bananas under irrigation grown? To help with this, we have brought in Mwabingu, a crop expert from Taita Tabeta County Agricultural Office. Joram sells banana seedlings, so we begin there. Hello. Hey, Karo. Yes. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. You're good? Yes. Oh, all right. Mm. So, um... Oh, Joram. Yes, Mr. Oi. John. Hey, I'm good. You, you oh, know yes. each other? Yeah, yeah I know you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I can see you're looking at the banana yes, seedlings. Yes, They're called yeah. seedlings. These are the seedlings, banana seedlings. Yes. They are under the banana hardening nursery, basically. Okay. Yes. Mm. So, John, mm. as an expert, yes, mm. so far, what have you observed? Looking at the seedlings here, yes. in fact, this one you can see, mm -hmm. some of them, they have overgrown. Mm -hmm. It means they needed to be transplanted earlier than this stage. Yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. He needs to prepare uh, somewhere, yes. a farm, so mm -hmm. that he can go and transplant those ones which are at the, at the correct size. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. okay. So, how should Joram plant his bananas? He had already prepared some holes. The holes should be two feet wide, two feet in length, and two feet deep. Ready, nice, good looking hole. Yeah, this is a nice looking hole. Mm -hmm. But then there's another uh, challenge here. Yes. Uh, problem. You know, this manure, this manure is not well decomposed. Why, why do you say that? Hmm? When a manure is well decomposed, yeah, yes. you usually see it, even by the texture, it becomes softer. Yeah. You know, we are talking about organic matter. Well decomposed manure helps the soil retain moisture, especially with low rainfall. So, and again, mm. if you come to the holder, yes, I can see you've decided to heap it on one side, which is not uh, well recommended. Yeah? Okay. So, what is recommended practically is you put topsoil on one side, subsoil on the other side, and you mix the topsoil with well okay. decomposed manure mm -hmm. and with a fertilizer. Okay. Okay, basal fertilizer. All Basically, right. you are talking about NPK or DAP. Okay. Yes. Mm. So it is recommended that you must use well decomposed manure. Mixing in the topsoil helps the banana grow better as this soil has a lot of nutrients and organic matter. Oh, I've seen um, some other, a bit of other challenges, yeah? Okay. So you can come and show you. All right. Let's follow the teacher. And so, we followed John. Uh, so John, yeah. what are we facing here? Now, the, the other issue that I've seen here is to do with the population. Yeah? You can see there are lots, a lot of banana plants here. Yeah, they're really crowded. They are really crowded. Uh -huh. But we advise farmers, eh, at one particular moment, you should have the mother, the daughter, and the granddaughter. Mother, daughter, and the granddaughter? Yes, and the granddaughter. Three. If you leave them crowded like this, yeah, they will, you will have to... Uh, they, they, they will lose their quality. You know, you do not have, you know, at one particular moment, you not produce those big bunches of banana that you, you want. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. John, yes. what should you do? Now, what we do, we advise farmers is to, 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 to remove these suckers, yeah? By using, How? I have got a tool here, this tool here, the suckering tool and a very sharp panga. Mm -hmm. Here, I want to demonstrate to you how to, to use this tool, yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, you just stop like this, using a very sharp panker, and then uh, now you insert this one here, just like this. You 
see? Ah. It will not come out again. It will not sprout again? Yeah, it will not sprout again. So John, mm. where is the father? Now I want to talk you through this male bud, eh? the male bud. You know, after this banana has yes. produced even the last finger, you can see this is the last finger, mm -hmm. so it is nice to remove this one here. And why we remove it, the reason behind it is that this one here can harbor a lot of insects, which now will bring uh, a lot of problems later on. The male bird has a lot of sugars that attract insects that can spread disease. Once the banana fruits have formed, remove the male bird. Keeping the mother, daughter and granddaughter ensures that you're constantly harvesting. The first plant to grow is the mother. When other suckers grow from it, keep one and remove the rest. As the mother gives fruits, the daughter will have grown and give more suckers. Again, keep one and remove the rest. To remove the male bud, simply cut with a clean panga. Remember to keep bananas that are under irrigation to three plants per hole at any time. Keeping the mother, daughter and granddaughter ensures that you're constantly harvesting. When digging the hole, put the topsoil on one side and the subsoil on the opposite side. Mix the manure with the topsoil. Mixing in the topsoil helps the banana grow better as this soil has a lot of nutrients and organic matter. Remember, you can also transplant the suckers and expand your banana plantation. Just dig the seedling out with a djembe and transplant. There's a lot of work to be done and Joram can't do it all alone. To help with this, we have called in an army of workers and they have gone to work. As a farmer, you are in a business, and before you produce anything, you need to know your market so as to avoid any losses. There you are, Joram. Yes. What's going on here? I'm just looking at the French beans, the way they are doing. Are they for your daily consumption? No, for business, because I want to do business, farming as a business. Excellent idea, and you know what? I've got just the right expert for you to go and meet. Shall we go meet him? Yeah. Let's go. Joram has big dreams for the farm that he has taken over from his father. To turn it into a good business, he will need some guidance. That is why we have brought in Diba, a financial expert from Ilri, to start him on the journey. Diba, very nice to see you. These are very hardworking farmer, young farmer, Joram. Joram, these are expert, Mr. Diba, who has come here to talk to you about some some issues you may have with your shamba. Now, Diba, you've gone around the shamba, you, as you can see for yourself. Uh, what do you think of it so far? I think it's a, it's a nice farm. Yes, yeah. it's done a lot. It's done a lot, yes. <laughs> I'd just like to know, so far in terms of uh, keeping records, those income earners, from which one are you making more? And uh, from which one do you think you need to improve? Uh, are you seeing that difference? Yeah, I've seen that difference. If you come to French bean farming, mm -hmm. it is more. It has a lot of profit, you see French beans. But if you come to livestock, like now, it has started to go down. Because you see droughts, the climate has changed. And no profit. So I think um, what you're doing is uh, it's good. Um, to mitigate this, you just need to also save your money mm -hmm. with the uh, circle or cooperatives so that when uh, in hard times, this is where you can go to easily. Uh, yes, you have banks, but compared to circle and cooperatives, it's a bit expensive in terms of interest rate when you want to borrow. Now, is there, is there a farmer nearby where we can take Joram to learn more about what we have discussed. Aha. It's time so, to learn from the other farmers. From the other farmer? Yeah. Is he expecting us? Yes. All right, Joram, do you want to go for a ride with us to see what other farmers are yeah, doing? Yeah, I would like to go there. All right, let's go see. Yeah. All right. Francis is a well-organized farmer and grows crops mainly on contract, ensuring that he has a ready market. 
he is very happy to teach Joram how to manage his farm as a business. What did you start with? Actually, I've been doing mixed farming all the time. I've been farming and keeping chickens, mostly chickens. Ah. Yeah. For, so you kept chicken for a long time? Yeah, it's a long time. Do you still have them? No, I don't have chickens at the moment. Because of having proper records, Francis was able to see the challenge with the chicken. And so he decided to diversify. I started growing maize, specifically for cedar. I had that contract and these guys told me that they are going, I mean, they offered the price which they'll buy the maize. So by the time I invested, I knew if I produce so much per acre, maybe five times I'll be getting so much per KG. Looking at his records and also by just knowing what he's doing, uh, because he's following it in a daily basis, yes. so he knows the cost that he's incurring per day versus the returns that he's bringing in per week. So he knows his books, so I think that's the best approach. And also I think the major thing that he said is also the market. Uh, for any product, if you don't have a market, mm -hmm. there is no way you can continue. Mm -hmm. Because you'll just incur in cost. Mm -hmm. So I think instead of incurring cost, he said, because I don't have the market, let me drop this and concentrate what is uh, my comparative advantage, which is the, now the, the crops. Yes. Joram keeps simple records, which have allowed him to see where his profits and losses are. Francis explained that he tries to grow crops, knowing where the market is. It is important to ask farmers around you about this to get the best information. Records are important. Keep a simple book with two sections. On one section, list the expenses, that is everything you are spending money on. The next section, list all the money coming in, no matter how small. The banana plantation looks really good now. All the excess plants removed. The stems pruned of dying leaves. Joram also has silage for the dry season. The calves are feeding better. The doors to his shed are fixed and the floor cleaned and leveled. Not only that, but he's now a better informed farmer. So, we've been here with you. We've come to the end of uh, another shape up. Did you enjoy our stay here? Oh, yeah. yeah we you did? Yeah. Huh? You, you yeah, don't look like you nice. enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. We can extend. Uh -huh. Stay with us for a week. Ah, <laughs> that would be nice. Okay, we'll be back. And thank you very much. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. See, you. see you. Bye, Rosemary. Bye -bye.